Good early evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Saba. This is round two for me today. Um, <laughs> I did uh, did a flight yesterday. First of all, it's good to be home again in Victor Papa Alpha Alpha Charlie. I loaded up the sim yesterday to fly the Islander, and I didn't have my beloved Anguilla Air Services uh, livery set up so I was kind of bummed about that but we're back in action today let's go external power supply on rotating beacon on mixtures and props full forward master and battery switches on fuel pumps on magnetos on open the fuel and I'm not going to be fooled this time. I can't believe it. I got to find out if there's a way to keep those off all the time. Because I keep forgetting to do this. Um, Alright. I think we're good to go. Take a quick look outside. Make sure there's nobody out there to kill or maim. And let's start that starboard engine. Let's crack the throttles. Sounds like an idea. I got good manifold pressure. Oil pressure is good. Oil pressure is this these two gauges right here. It's the one thing you want to make sure is going, or is you know at an acceptable value. Manifold pressure is good. Oil pressure is good. Uh, and then because if you if you don't have oil pressure, you don't have oil in your engine, and you're running an engine with no oil, and that's no good. I mean, I'm not a mechanic, but that's no good. And then when you get your engine started, you turn your fuel pumps off, and then you check your fuel pressures to make sure your fuel pressures are good, because these engines have uh, two fuel pumps. They have electric fuel pumps, and they have engine-driven fuel pumps. These are the electric fuel pumps, which you can turn on and off. Uh, they are backups in case the uh, engine fuel pumps, engine-driven fuel pumps, fail. And... So, um, so you want to you turn those fuel pumps off after you start the engines, and then make sure that they are still working, or make sure you still have oil uh, fuel pressure rather. Uh, once you turn them off, all right. Um, one zero one. Or is the Q and H? Is it the uh, nav and strobe lights, taxi lights? Engage the brakes. Turn the external power supply off. Turn off the fuel, uh, the parking brake rather. And it's probably a decent idea at some point to turn on our avionics, right? What do you suppose? Uh, let me put the the parking brake back on here. So there is also a new. Uh, I probably should make sure I disable the other one. Um, there's also a new GNS 530 from Working Title, and Working Title um, is a collection of guys who did uh, started working on the CJ4, I believe when Microsoft Flight Simulator first came out. Now this is one of the instrument self-tests and it doesn't work, apparently. I was gonna show it to you guys and it was gonna be cool, but apparently it doesn't work. Um, what it should do, um, your CDI should be half left. Uh, your vertical CDI should be half up. So this should be half here, that should be half here. Um, and your two from flag should say two, and then that would indicate to you that the uh, instrument panel is connected properly with the GNS 530. It doesn't work, um, which is somewhat disappointing. Uh, but CS Lovey, right? Um, shout out to. Uh, BVI boy and hold on here give me one second ladies and germs um, there's two guys that came on 
Stubbo242 and BDI Flyboy. Um, it's awesome that you guys have subscribed. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I just love uh, like-minded people, you know, flying, like flying around the Caribbean. And I'm glad you guys enjoy the videos. I enjoy doing it. So let's lean the mixtures for taxi, which I should have done instead of running my mouth. And let's switch to the nav frequency. It's so funny how, like, in in a sim airplane, I just kind of do these things, and and, and I, I basically get them right most of the time, like getting stuff kind of set up and going. Whereas in a real airplane, like I do the checklists and I do them like three times every checklist to make sure I got everything. I suppose the, the, the uh, I want to do a video at some point, by the way, on the differences between real flying and sim flying, and that's really the big one. Is that in sim flying, the worst thing that's going to happen to me is that maybe I get a little dehydrated because I left my bottle of water out of reach, or I might run over my own toe with my chair. Whereas in a real airplane, if you forget the wrong thing, you can really be in a bind, you know, um, which we are reminded of often, unfortunately, in the world of aviation. Uh, so I'm just going to turn on some panel lights. It's getting a little lit. Not dark, but it's uh, certainly uh, mind having the panel lights on. Uh, that's the big difference, is that your butt is in a sling if you're in the real airplane and you forget the wrong thing. Alright, let's go landing light on. Uh, you always want your landing lights on when you're on an active runway. Uh, save a traffic, and with a 264 back taxiing runway, 1-2 full length of departure, save a... I bet you this airplane... well, I was just about to say, I bet you this airplane can get off the ground. From this uh, from this uh, taxiway, <laughs> I, don't know if I don't know if it's uh, probably not a worthwhile idea to try. So I flew this flight uh, earlier today, um, and what happened was I've got both. I've got the payware. Juliana scenery, and now they have a freeware Juliana scenery, which is great. Um, it's a really good scenery. I, I did a, a, a video yesterday with a demo of that scenery, and I like it. It's it's really nice. It's from uh, Sobo. It's freeware. It comes with the 40th anniversary edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's wonderful. It's great to have a free version of it. Um, it's not as good as the payware. I'll continue talking about this once we get airborne. Don't want to sit here too long. Fuel pumps on. Set takeoff flaps. Mixtures and props full forward. And I always say I always like to make a right hand turn. They've got this cutout up here where they basically try to make try to get you to make a left hand turn to get lined up on the runway. I like get to make a right hand turn because that way I can see. Uh, that's in all airplanes, in all at all airports. That's the way I like doing it because then you can see final from where you are. Um, Save a traffic in Willow 264, taking off runway 12 to be a crosswind departure to the north. Save All right, let's get lined up here. Heading indicator checks with the runway number. Let's go take off power. Make sure props from board flaps and seven pumps are on. And power is looking good. Let's release those brakes. Airspeed is alive, accelerating normally. 65 and rotate. We're off before we even get to the uh, to the uh, to the taxiway there, which is pretty cool. This is another, I mean, this is a freeware scenery. Granted, it's not a very complicated airport, but nonetheless, it's really cool. It's a really beautiful job they've done. So, 
400 feet, we can start making our turn out. I'm ready to put those flaps up. And we can bring the props back a little bit. We can power back to 2500. Let the nose pitch down to 100 knots. Settle. Let's see what it settles down at. A uh, thousand feet AGL. You turn your fuel pumps off. Check your fuel pressures. Fuel pressures looking good. AGL above ground level. You guys probably know that. But one of those little things. Those little useless bits. Well, it's not a useless bit of information. I do have a lot of useless. I'm happy to share. Uh, oh, look at that. Is this is a beautiful airplane or what? And that's why, by the way, this this view is a good reason, it shows you the reason why you have your landing lights on under 10,000 feet. It's like daytime running lights in a car. Remember before daytime running lights were a thing? And whenever you saw a, light, a car with its lights on during the day, you'd go, hey, the car's got its lights on. Until, I think Volvo finally realized, hey, that's, not, that's a pretty good idea. It makes people take note of the car. So daytime running lights became a thing. But uh, it's the same thing, the same principle with landing lights in your airplane. It makes you visible. So, we are on our way, 2,800, climbing 3,000, flaps are up, 50 feet below our desired cruise altitude, pull the power, pull the props back a little bit, push the nose over, power back to 2,300. And we'll try and level off. The plane will want to continue climbing. And why is that? It's because I have cruise power set, but I am not at my cruise airspeed. And flying airplanes is... It's funny, I actually just, real, I actually just noticed this is, now in the, this is now in the FAA's airplane flying handbook and it's been something that I've really kind of thought about for a number of years. The FAA has now written an entire chapter on it. Their new, the new version of the FAA uh, airplane flying handbook, which is that flying airplanes is really a lot about managing energy. And um, what I mean by that is an airplane has really um, absent any flight control inputs an airplane has basically um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this the way that an airplane balances out its excess or lack of energy for whatever it's trying to do is either by pitching the nose up or pitching the nose down. Um, like in this particular case, at 125 knots, 
I have too much energy for level flight. So in order to maintain that 125 knots, the plane has to pitch the nose up, otherwise it would start going faster. The airplane, the airplane, uh, you trim for airspeed, right? I suppose that's a better way of explaining this. A lot of people think you trim for a flight attitude, like you trim for level flight. You do, but really what you're doing is you're trimming for speed. You're trimming for a particular airspeed. And then, whether you add energy or remove energy from the equation using the throttle, the airplane will either pitch up or, or pitch down to maintain whatever airspeed you've got it pitched, you've got it trimmed for. Like if I can ever get this stupid thing level, Juliana traffic can go to two six four one zero miles to the south and down runway one zero. Saint uh, Princess Juliana. So basically, I've got this trimmed for 125 knots, and if I go full throttle right now, let's do it. Let's have a little fun. Props full forward. Power full forward. Let's see what's going to happen. The airplane speeds up, but what it wants to do, it wants to get to that trimmed airspeed of 125 knots. So it's going to pitch up. Watch where it's going to settle. It's going to oscillate a little bit. Watch where it settles. See, and now it's going a little too fast. A little faster than what it's trimmed for, so it's going to pitch the nose up. To get rid of some of that energy. oscillations if the airplane has static dynamic stability. Say that three times fast. The airplane will eventually settle in a climb at 125 knots. Of course the trick with Microsoft Flight Simulator is the airplanes do not have positive static stability. They have negative static stability. Makes trying to sh make, show you guys my demonstration a little bit difficult. See, now it's just going to find its way to 125 and just chill there. See how it keeps climbing, increasing the, the pitch angle. It's searching for that 125. Now, back. Let's pull it back to 21 squared. Now, see it's okay, cool, we're at 125, the airplane's happy. And it realizes, oh wait a minute, I can't stay at 125 at that pitch attitude. So in order to maintain that airspeed, the only thing the airplane can do is pitch the nose down. Now it's gone past 125, so it's going to pitch the nose back up and try to get back to 125. Oops, now the airplane is below 125. It's going to pitch the nose down again so we can try and get to 125. I just gave it a little help to, to kind of settle at 125 because otherwise we'll be sitting here watching this yo-yo back and forth all day. But see, now it's settled at 125 in a descent. And this is the pitch attitude that will keep it at 125 knots. So, moral of the story is really a lot about the energy state of the airplane. I'm going to pull the manifold
full pressure back to 15. Now I'm going to go see if I can find what me, what me weather is in Princess Juliana. All right, 1016, one zero zero seven zero niner. See now, in order to, to keep that airspeed, 125. That's this is actually a great example of it. So now that I've pulled the power back so much to stay at 125, it needs this descent rate, this pitch altitude. So the airplane will do whatever the airplane needs to do to stay at 125, if that's what you've got it trimmed for. So you don't trim for a pitch attitude, you trim for an airspeed, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Alright, I'm going to go a few pumps on. Juliana traffic, uh, Willa 264 turning a 5 mile final on my 1 0. Now, without touching the power at all, I'm going to pull the nose up. Because I am removing energy from the equation. Airspeed is going to decrease. Right? And how am I removing energy? I'm removing energy by holding the nose up. But once I release the back pressure on the yoke, the nose is going to pitch right down because it wants to find 125. So, it's, so that, that's why every time you make a power change, you've got to make a, a trim change. Otherwise, the airplane is, is just going to do whatever it needs to do to return to whatever speed you had it trimmed for before. It's going to make your life difficult. Um, trim is a really big part of good flying. Not that I would know anything about good flying, but you know what I mean. Highlights are on, a few pumps are on. One thing I've learned about this airplane is that we have to worry about being too high. <laughs> you do have to worry about being several hundred yards to the wrong side of the center line, though. Uh, I'm going mixtures full forward. They're props full forward, rather. So, two pumps on. Extras and props full forward. I'll give you another good. I wish this would give me ground speed, except for the fact that I've got both the PMS and the um, working title GNS 530s installed. So. Another good aviation rule of thumb. Rules of thumb are really great in aviation. They just give you a little bit of an idea of what to look for. So if you cut your ground speed in half and add 50, that's going to give you approximately, that was my second notch of flaps, it's going to give you approximately the descent rate you need for the ground speed that you have. And what I mean by cutting in half, so if I'm going 80 knots, cut it in half, that's 40. 
So, and then you, you multiply that times 10. You, you basically add a zero on the end, right? So 80 divided in half is 40. Add a zero at the end is 400. Add 50 to that, 450. So at 80 knots ground speed, 450 is a pretty darn good uh, descent rate. You're about to find out why I said that I'm never, I never feel like I'm too high in this airplane. Because I think this airplane does really, really well is descend. But the one thing I don't want to do is descend quite a, quickly and then get slow, which is what I'm doing. That's a recipe for a hard landing. that not too bad don't want to touch anything on the runway as far as controls go except for the mixtures need your mixtures that prevents your spark plugs spark plugs from fouling fouled spark plugs can cause a loss of engine power, and one thing we do not like as pilots is a loss of engine power. That's a good way to increase what my instructor refers to as the pucker factor. Which is when your butt puckers up when something bad happens in an airplane. Princess Juliana traffic, uh, Anguilla 264 is clear the runway. Juliana. Okay, so now, get off the runway, come to a stop, then you can make the adjustments that you need. Put your flaps up, turn your fuel pumps off, do all that fun stuff. Just don't do it on the runway. The reason you don't do it on the runway is because you're half paying attention to what you're doing. And it's very, very easy to pull the wrong lever or press the wrong button. And in a fixed gear airplane like the Islander, that's not really that big a deal in a retractable gear airplane if you think you are pulling the flaps up and you accidentally pull up the landing gear instead that is going to ruin your day and it happens it happens all I don't know if I want to say all the time it happens often enough that it's a thing you know, it's one of those things that every pilot, every good pilot knows. Don't mess around with stuff on the runway. Get off the runway, come to a stop. Once you come to a stop, then you can fool around with your flip, your switches and, and all that fun business, but don't do it on the runway. All right, come to a stop. Mixtures to idle cutoff, throttles are idle, lights are off, avionics master always off before you turn your magnetos off, master and battery switches off, parking brake on, let the citizens go. Let the people go. Alright, and the other thing we're going to do, since we did a little tour yesterday of, uh, what is that? Uh, okay. Since we did a little tour yesterday of the freeware version of this airport, which is good, it's really good. I'm not saying it's bad at all, but I removed it, and now here we are. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give 
give you guys a quick look of this version. Compare. This is the first kind of big difference is the wind air hanger. Right? You get all the twin otters here, which is really cool. And let's go over this way. This is the fire department. It's the other big difference. Well, I don't know if call it a big difference, but another difference. Uh, and this is where the islanders park down here. Um, I stopped when I was in St. Martin and took pictures of the islanders that were sitting over here, right through that fence. Um, I think there's some more scenery down that way, but I'm not going to bother because I didn't show it in the other video. So let's go this way. And we'll go down and look at the fuel depot. I'll basically give you the same tour in this scenery that I gave you in the other one. Did I leave my lights on? Oh boy, I have light. Um, what is the... I think they have a lot more static aircraft than the other. This is the, the fuel area uh, whoopsie I was just thinking that I'm starting to get pretty good at this uh, this camera and then I do that uh, let's see there's the VOR Papa Julia Mike 113.9 I believe it is this is the, or was the, I think it was a casino? A whole, yeah, there's a whole bunch of apartments here that you can rent now. And let's go check out the bar. I thought the freeware version did a pretty nice job of the bar. And this is, this is genuinely what this looks like. Um, so, uh, the difference is this correctly has these high tops, right? Oopsie. Little high top tables. Which are right there. Then you come, this little bar is correctly placed. Oh, I get thrown out. This little bar is kind of funny. That's that's correct. And in, in the sim, in this version, um, this is not the best beach bar in the world, in my opinion. But it's pretty cool. It's a neat bar. It's you know, it's it's fun. It's fun to do once. It's like I thought when I was going to Princess Juliana. That, or when I was going to St. Martin, rather, that I would just live there. I would go there, order one Heineken after the other, and just sit there all day. But I really wouldn't. It's just not quite that interesting. And there's a ton of bars around the airport that you can go to that are really fun, where you can watch planes take off, so... You know, that, that part, it's just a little bit touristy. It's really not bad. So let's hang out here and see if this plane takes off. It should be a cool way to end our video. And I am going to take a look on Flight Radar 24. I would not be surprised at all if this is live traffic. And it is. That is American Airlines 2478. <laughs> That's live traffic, guys. How cool is that? Should we 
watch it like this or should we watch it from the beach? Out she goes. Let's do the fence thing. And there you have it guys. I think that's a pretty cool way to end the video. So I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, that concludes today's flight. Now we can go back down here to the beach. Grab a beer. Watch the sun go down. Take it easy guys. See you next time.